Okay, so I'm live now, and wow. All right, so I'm live now, and wow. Just getting used to this settings again. And <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty extraordinary uh, doing this same thing again. But yeah, yesterday was, uh, I would say it was pretty interesting. It was highly energetic. Um, and I could tell when the environment is that energetic because I talk faster. I mean, my speech is so rapid and I'm on point with whatever I'm talking about. I get I cut to the chase pretty quickly. Um, when we were at Best Buy just trying to figure out stuff, I already spent a lot of time on my computers trying to figure stuff out. And when I entered into a problem, I know that I couldn't figure out. I just saved it, put it to the side, and then brought it to Best Buy because I already had an appointment. And so I was just showing them, you know, how I was able to do everything and migrate everything over using all the different um, uh, <laughs> systems. And once you understand systems, it's not difficult to migrate from one machine to another. But uh, yeah. It's one of those that I definitely was like proud of myself that I was able to migrate the systems without really any hiccup and then figure out just the, the slight nuances of the updates that sometimes when they do get stuck in some kind of installation glitch that there are workarounds. And so I learned the workarounds and I was just firing on all millions of cylinders and I was energetic. And also yesterday, I had a few hives that weren't that bad, but it was just like having bug bites, you know. Well, not, you know. Um, and people think like, oh, is there a mosquito in the house and all this other stuff. And no, it's just that when there is a lot of energy in the atmosphere, the, um, the body develops growth. And then it seems like you have bug bites, but it's not really, you don't have bug bites. It's just the body's bringing up growth and then you're going to release the demons. And so I'm happy to say, I'm proud to say that, you know, a nice U-shaped poop was great this morning. I'm going to turn off this light here. Ugh. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, I can't complain with where I'm at. But when I woke up this morning and hung up my husband before he went to go off on this fishing thing, I was drinking my coffee and I was just like, okay, I'm drinking my coffee and I'm listening to my husband listen to the Facebook reels and he was listening to some reel that I was talking about that, that was interviewing a kid that murdered his parent, his mom. And I'm just like, holy shit. And the dude sounded like an old man, 15 years old, and he sounded like an old man. And it's like, oh gosh, I mean, you know, when I had my theories around serial killers and kids that are like kids that are, that are, they're bred, well, not bred, but they have that serial killer instinct in them or that murderous instinct in them, I'm telling you, they have some, not only some damage going on, they're acting out like an NK T cell, natural killer T cells. They're acting like an antibiotic. And and then it almost sounds like a movie because the kids sound like he was like 80 years old or 60 years old. And so that's why I said like, you know, a possession is real. Wow, a 15 year old destroys his mom, premeditates a horrible slain and he sounds like an old, old man, like something out of a movie when you hear like a voiceover of some kind of devil and it sounds like it just, I'm sorry, watch the movies and you hear what, what they determined a devil and it, it sounded like that. I'm like, wow, that's some scary stuff. And so listening to my husband's reels indirectly, the reel mentioned misery, a Stephen King book, because the kid used a sledgehammer on his mom. And I'm just like, holy crap. And so that was a little bit too close to home, the, how the universe kind of understands where you're coming from. Like I'm saying, you know, we have people that do disable people's ability to evolve because they don't want them to leave or some other shit going on. And that's the scary part of our society is that's what's been bred into the population. It's people are so desperate for company that they'll be able to, they'll disable people from relieving them or find ways to do that. And it's through love, sex, through just so many different mediums. And that's where you really have to pay attention to your, to what, 
it is that you are holding people hostage with. I mean, when you people when you think about why people <laughs> have to be around people, obviously because of deficiencies. I mean, you don't have to be around people all the time. But why is it you hold hostage your friends, family, loved ones, sons, daughters, and all of that? And there's a lot of deep-seated reasoning behind people holding each other hostage. And if you're willing to take a look at that, there might be some way to set yourself free. And not everybody can do it. So I was like, like oh, too synchronistic. Given a few Facebook Lives, I did mentioning micro-level parallels to misery. Okay. Um the world is definitely deeper than what we see. So that's why when I post something like this, which is in contrast to the title of this video called A Case for Life. I mean, the title shows a jelly juice drink. So I ha I'm doing this new thing on this. I'll see how it turns out. But I call this A Case for Life because that's when you think about it. The book that I'm going to be developing now on top of the book that I already have already is what is called giving birth to yourself. But really, when you think about it, I was thinking about stuff when I was eating food with my husband before I went to the appointment. And I was like, oh my God, I had this thought in my mind and a new t a title, a title that's not like giving birth to yourself. It's really a case for life. And then maybe I could put as a subtitle giving, you know, giving birth to yourself. But really what I'm actually promoting and what I'm advocating is a case for life because it is about the law, the law of the law of nature, the law of life and the law of death. And what I'm providing is a case for life. I am developing an argument to promote life, not always attack life. Okay. And right now in politics, religion and science dogmas and all the holistic and the, and the allopathic system and the energy healing world, they are always, I'll say they like directly and indirectly is trying to destroy life. But not do it to such an extent that you can make correlation equals causation. It's the cumulative effect of destroying life. And it goes so deep. It goes even into the love that you have for your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your husbands. And who you keep around on a continuous basis, keeping them hostage through dependency, through your needs. And I'm just asking people to examine why they need the people that around them that they need and what is it about that need and it could be why your religion and that's the thing that I, I, I know people are, are going to have an issue with me challenging religions all religions i don't care what they are because we've been raised around them for such a long time and we have so much text around them and so much meaning we've developed around religion that would also translate to politics and even science dogmas but uh, i'll tell you when i'm thinking about 6,000 years ago and there are higher intelligent beings that figured out how to wow people who I won't say less I mean lesser intelligence is not slamming anyone because I'll tell you everyone has different levels of intelligence different levels of intellect I'm not saying that you're stupid no everyone has the ability to learn if they want to, if they provide a space for learning, a space for evolution, a space for change, a space for anything they want. But if you don't provide a space for for increasing your intellect, increasing your intelligence, then you're stopping yourself from rising to the level of the smartest person in the room. And so when you have intelligent intellectual beings coming in to an indigenous population i don't care what they are it could be just humans that were put on earth to evolve up to a certain level and then stop at a certain level and then something else comes in as higher intelligence saying oh look here fire or who here look you know power or electricity or this or that and people are like oh my god literally oh my god and they start worshiping and developing stories around the energy and those stories become the the culture and then that culture becomes a religion that religion becomes a political thought process that political thought process then becomes a science dogma and then that's where the development of all the language that has the the root words and you know, <laughs> suffixes and prefixes suffixes and prefixes prefixes and all the different grammar and then yeah and <laughs> I mean just look at the ancient texts, what they wrote. I mean, you, using Latin, 
which is an ancient language that's not really used anymore, but it's used in the sciences and used in different contexts. So you know, you understand the derivations, but not that we use it on a, on a you know, our, on our everyday basis. But so you understand the derivation, where it comes from. And it's a jargon that some people who are educated use certain Latin root words to then understand why these words exist, why these religions exist, or political thought processes. Okay? So, I, I mean, so I think back 6,000 years ago when someone who is intelligent is someone like, let's say, Jesus Christ or who they think could be a messiah and there's even that where some religions are like hey the messiah they don't have a special name for it except for the name messiah but that is a different name for a savior that's projected out there i don't know exactly who people think the messiah is when you when they say messiah does something a person pleasure thing or an idea represent the messiah or is it just something that's left open that is ever evolving but so let's say someone who was pretty evolutionary for their time. Let's say like Jesus Christ, he came, you know, he, he found a way to 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 increase his intelligence because somehow he figured something out or he didn't get he got a, a different epiphany about something and it just went from there. And then he was able to talk to people who weren't putting things together because they were too busy with stuff and. And then he w was questioning authority, and authority didn't like what he questioned, so made him a martyr. And then the people that destroyed him then developed a religion around it. I mean, there's, I mean, look, just look how easy it is to develop a following just on your Facebook. All you got to do is find a way to say something against the system, or find a different angle on something, and people have never seen it before. And even if they have, if it's been done before, people who have never really had experience with life will then glom onto it, just like the conspiracy world. I've been doing this conspiracy shit for about 10, 12 years, and then we have new kids, kid, not new kids, but kids coming on Facebook and discovering the conspiracy world, discovering, oh, do we need to question what's in the water? Do we need to question what's in the skies? Do we need to question what's out there and then all the different therapies? And so they think they discover sliced bread. So you're seeing new followers, new, new people adding to it the same religions that are happening over and, and it's just like reinventing the wheel that's what we're watching is people reinventing the wheel and new followers come on every day when they wake up right to somebody else's thought process that they never really examined until something clicked in their head or they have an issue that they thought one thing and then when they saw something that seemed like it would be correlation equals causation they're like, oh, yeah, now I get where the anti-V people are coming from, the anti-V-A-C-C-I-N-E, because at first they're like, oh, yeah, we love the Vs, and they're like, it was never an issue for me, and then one day it becomes an issue, and they just had a V just yesterday, and the, and the climate changed, and, yeah, there was, like, growth on turbo, and now they're like, okay, correlation is causation. Now they became a believer, a follower, and there goes another person adding to another religion in our society. That's how easy it is to develop religions, activism, and that's how easy it is to become a follower in somebody else's thought process. And so I'm thinking about what happened 6,000 years ago around every religion, even before that and even after that, and even the 1960s, okay? And so, so if I'm questioning their religion, it's not that I'm trying to slam you. I'm trying to save your life without be trying to come off as a savior. So I'm not trying to save anyone, really. I'm trying to give you a different way to look at things. I mean, you can keep your religion, but I'll tell you, I don't know. I mean, I know how powerful words can be, and they can be very powerful. People don't even realize the power of their words until they start questioning the words that they're saying. And so can I say that can you look at where I'm coming from and still have your politics, religion, and science belief systems? I guess you could play both sides of the fence, but you don't. when you have that kind of words, that kind of spells of death and destruction and whatever embedded into you, through a religion, through a science dogma, through a political thought process, you're fighting yourself. It's like bringing on evolution, like with the J world, bringing in the evolution, the water, the the milk, the meat, the cheese, the eggs, and you're feeling stuff, and then you're taking antibiotic right, you know, right along. You're like, oh, that's what we were doing back in the early years of the J world, is that we're bringing up all of our predisposed issues and then taking antibiotics on top of that to stop it. And so we, we weren't really, we were understanding we're transitioning that we needed to feel stuff but we were still responding to the same thing that happened even before we did the j world 
the same way. And that's kind of what I see what politics, religion, and science has done to people while they're exploring the J world is that their 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 belief systems, their antibiotic belief systems and all the politics, religion, and science world that are all about destruction and death and all that stuff and spiritual stuff is working against the potential for their life with the J world. And that's the dichotomy. That's the fight that people are in right now when they are trying to stay with their religion, stay with their political thought process, stay with their science dogmas, and explore the J world at the same time. I don't know if those two can actually work together. People will try, and I'll, I'll give you all the credit if you can work with those and still have your pulse religion and science belief systems and still survive this crazy climate change without questioning really what was given to you at birth even before that what was given to your parents and your parents parents and your parents 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 all the way back to six thousand years ago if that in fact is true but yeah you can go to go to the go to the the middle east and go to the the gaza strip and they'll tell you yeah six thousand years we have you know we have claims to this land from six thousand years ago five thousand four thousand three though i mean the, the religious wars are insane okay so um so the world is definitely deeper than what we see like seriously definitely deeper than what we see and then yesterday yeah i mean when you see me scratching here and there it's because that yeah, with the all this growth i don't get pains really i mean i'll get maybe a little bit of arm pain because the body is pushing all the growth the excessive growth from a instability from a fluctuation and so it develops growth and then also the body is allowed to push that growth through the different channels and so then so as i'll feel the, the armpit a little bit releasing the demons um then, then yeah they'll be like uh a little bit like a few like look like bug bites but they're not they're just like hives even my scar my husband's saying that even his scar from when he did something when he was laying brick or something it also gets it feels stinging and look like angry and red when the environment has shifted and when your body is really pushing stuff out the scars on your body that are real that were really aggressive really deep they'll they'll come up and they'll feel you'll feel them and so it's pretty crazy so now when, when i'm looking at um so yeah a lot of energy yesterday it was crazy energy it was amazing energy um and it was good but i definitely knew how to channel the energy i was channeling energy through just understanding my computers through um, just Facebook Reels, watching suits, listening to music, developing stuff like that. And it wasn't as aggressive as it was a couple weeks ago before I got my period. And I wasn't eating like massive amounts of food and feeling the major bloat. I mean, I ate food yesterday. I had a steak, but it, I didn't feel the bloat like I did a couple weeks ago. Um, so it, definitely a different frequency wasn't, it wasn't as strong, but definitely energetic. And then some people in the J world are saying that they have to go to sleep okay and so um and so anyway so yeah so yesterday was pretty energetic and then in africa they're now coming up to the first world so as america and the first world are kind of lowering itself so to speak to match itself a little bit to allow the third world to come up a little bit now you're seeing like africa they're coming up they're getting their influencers they're having their religions or politics or science dogmas embedded and integrated into their world um, they're getting the internet they're <laughs> and so also the sports so now i understand the sports and the olympics and all those different com competition not only does it breed capitalism yes but it channels the warrior spirit or the warrior within a person through the sports okay so now i understand now why we have sports like football basketball uh soccer i played soccer i played i was very aggressive playing soccer for many years um and so i get it now and i understand now why when you're saying before africa didn't really have like an african team ah uh, now they are going to have the different nations or the different states within africa play against each other like i'm watching the senegalese uh, uh soccer players playing against nigerians and no different than john oaks is saying that you know manchester united is kicking ash and those are his teams that he that he like advocates we know in america we have 49ers and the cleveland browns and all the <laughs> different sports stuff and so the sports 
channels the warriors within. So we have, if we're breeding people who are really energetic and are bred to fight and compete, not only in the in the boardroom, but then also on the street, we have the gangs and the gang violence, and then you also have the sports. And you have those, the salesmen, which same thing as the boardroom, but not really. There's different levels of competition. I was bred to be very competitive, and I'm still very competitive. But now it's intellectually competitive. Before, I was very physically competitive. When you think about it, I mean, trying to look like the, the quintessential sex bomb on some level, and then also play the sports, and then also try to beat everybody in my on the sales floor when I'm doing tele, you know, tele telesales and cold calling i mean it, i'll tell you i was even trying to beat my own records of of gaining so many clients in a span of like 30 days i, I mean and it's so so now it's not so much i'm competing with other people i'm now competing with myself can i better myself in understanding new concepts and saying things in a different way so it lands in somebody else's world and they get it, okay? So that's the competition I'm in now. I'm not really competing with anybody else, but if someone challenges me, like really someone challenges me by attacking me, oh, I will run circles around them because I understand the work, full world. I'm not biased. I understand both sides of the issue. I understand people. I understand everything. So now when someone tries to compete with me and try to attack my ideas and attack everything, Believe me, the competition will come out, but it'll be an intellectual competition. It won't be a physical. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to destroy their spirit. But if you come at me, I know where you're coming from. And I know how to use the intellectual, uh, my intellectual arsenal to lay out any opponent intellectually. And it's, and it's not even financially. I'm not trying to bankrupt them. But when you come at, when you come after somebody with your intent to destroy, that then yes, you, you better know what it is that you're doing because you don't realize that, that I don't I'm not a captive agent. So that's why I say don't challenge people. Better yourself than try to think that your religion is better than somebody else's religion. Like I see some people say, like, Oh yeah, the people that believe in Jesus Christ are so horrible and they're like, Oh, we're Hebrews and, and that's they're all brainwashed. I mean it's all it's, it's all war. What I'm saying is Maybe relook and re-examine your religion that was given to you. Maybe relook and re-examine what you're competing against and why. Maybe relook and re-examine why you're so distracted in in either wronging somebody else or um, or pointing out that somebody else should believe in what you believe. What about taking care of yourself? What about setting an example for your children and for the people that you are performing for that okay so maybe you're seeing things that yeah in your gut you're like okay maybe it's not as comfortable as I want it to be and there is change going on but what are you going to do to survive this change because pointing out problems anybody can point out a problem because they can develop any problem they want they can develop a story about anything out there but what is your solution to survive it and if you think people should die someday that ain't a fucking solution if you think that aging out and just and, and, and starving and taking painkillers and always falling into the distractions is a solution to save people from what you're seeing as a problem, and then you think you should die someday, okay, and you're all about the spiritual world, how is that any different than what somebody else is doing? Okay, so that so that that was a spell that was forced on humanity. The slave mentality. It's not just like, okay, you're watching thousands and thousands of Israelites and other people enslaved under the Egyptians back in the back in Exodus during that Bible story of Passover, where they're hauling square bricks to build the pyramids. It doesn't slavery doesn't always look like that. It doesn't always look like, you know, picking cotton in the cotton fields. Slavery could also be the fact that you're forced into into a lifestyle, into a belief system, into a politic, religion, you know, dogma that you feel you can't get out of. You can't even fucking question or even move. You think the system is fixed. You think that everything else is fixed against you when you're actually the one that's fixed. You're the one that's not evolution. The system is evolution. It will never be fixed. If it was fixed, everything would die. Everyone would die. And so slavery is when you can't even question your own belief system, your own lifestyle, 
your own political dogma. You can't even question your own activism. You can't even say, oh, wait, where am I responsible for why I have a, a reaction to microbes, or I have a reaction to climate change. If you can't even examine that maybe you're not at the greatest representation for your kids, that you're just advocating the same shit over again, reinforcing what already you're an activist against, and thinking that that's going to solve your kids' problems. That's going to make a world a better place for them. It's the parents that will pave the way of destruction or pave the way of some kind of evolution and longevity for their, for, their, for, their, for their family. But again, if parents and adults don't realize that they have to change the way they do shit, what kind of fucking example are you setting for your children? Okay, so that's the J world is questioning your politics, your religion, your science dogmas, and that you are a terrestrial being that was given every opportunity to be at the top of the food chain. And when you're actively saying you want to be at the bottom of the food chain because you believe you should be spiritual and die someday, that's what I said about <laughs> people are, are going to deteriorate to the point of where then when their spirit rises and right, their, their energy and their body deteriorates and then they're forced into a frog body, into a micro body, having to start over again, that's essentially what these parents are advocating is their kids start over again back to a microbe and potentially being forced into a dog body under the uh, under the care of someone who doesn't give a shit about that that dog that's leading that dog outside all the time and and having to be to suffer through under the thumb of a human who doesn't fucking know any better and you see humans out there with animals that 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 <laughs> that animal has no choice in the matter the, the 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 owners are out all day long and there is no longevity in 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 the veterinary world it's all about surgeries and 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 just entertainment and the animal doesn't have a voice can you imagine being forced into a body of an animal where you have absolutely no fucking voice no choice in the matter you're enslaved that's what having animals is, is like when, when you are put into an animal body and you have absolutely no voice except for a bark. That's what's fucking crazy. That's what people don't realize when, when they have allowed themselves to carry to the point of being a microbe where they are then dispersed so much to end up being a microbe and forced eventually down the road coming back as an insect or something else. All right, so death forces people into energy conversion. Life gives humans choices and their intention is not to convert, but to understand what life is on at the terrestrial level. Hold on. Oh, my nose. <sighs> not spiritual level, but terrestrial level. Okay, hold on. Oh. Oh, I can do this. I can just, okay. And so... Most people are so dogmatic and enslaved, they will not understand this, and they are not your issue. So I'm talking to those in the J-World that really get where I'm coming from, okay? Those are just observing, yeah. I, I say good luck to those who are just observing. Um, people have to set themselves free. Adults have a better chance to set themselves free. Kids are enslaved. I would not want to be a child in this system. I would not want to be a child in this system. But even some adults are children. And I'm saying, what a time to be alive. And so then I said, some people are headed back or headed into being recycled back into the universe. And who knows what kind of meat suit or lesser intelligence they will be forced into. And so if you are already extremely intelligent and have an amazing foundation, why would you let your body die? Why would you distract everyone from taking care of themselves? Why would you always be pointing out all the distractions out there, all the things and not release those demons and bring on the food and show your kids they got to fucking survive this or they're going to end up becoming a dog someday when you think about it on a theoretical abstract level. They're going to come back becoming an insect someday. But that's so Buddhist. Well, yeah, you understand Buddhism, which is a, t a type of religion that does believe in death someday because of deterioration and all the fasting. But remember in seven years in Tibet with Brad Pitt, and when he was building a movie theater for the, the Dalai Lama at the time, and they were hurting the worms, and so he had to stop the construction because 
they were hurting the worms, which was probably their ancestors that came back as a worm. That I tell you, there's something too. There's something in every religion that there is actual factual, probably factual truth. Now you can believe whatever the hell you want. You can think you're going off to fly off to heaven or nirvana or hell or Pleiades or some other, you know, plane of existence or come back on this earth as a microbe. And so why the hell would you take something that is so complex, that is so infinitely adaptable and destroy it through deterioration and then find absolution in your religion to come back as a single celled amoeba, to come back as a dog? Maybe you graduate from a dog to a lion and then a tiger and then a bear and then a monkey and then from a monkey to a gorilla and then a gorilla and then who knows some other uh, evolutionary species that is before a certain, <laughs> I, I, I mean, as if you believe in evolution that people evolve from monkeys and apes and all that and hey, you can argue about that. But I don't think you just were created that they just put you together in a lab with different body parts. I actually seriously see the evolutionary process. And that's where diversity comes from because when you have a single cell microbe attract other intelligence and then it keeps multiplying, multiplying, and then it then divides, division. And then you have different levels of intelligence based upon the surroundings, based upon how well the people or microbes work together and then what their intention is and what the infrastructure is and all that, then you see the increased intelligence. That's how when people go, when they don't go to school, right? And so when they go to school, let's say they, they graduate high school and then they go on to their job, get certified, and then they go back to college or back to school and they go to college and they learn something different. Now they're more intelligent because they have more information under their belt and they've taken on microbes and released the demons so they're not only adapting physiologically to their atmosphere, but they're taking on information from professors, from an institution that may have some biases, yes, but then if you're discerning enough, you can figure out the biases and figure out the foundation, and you can evolve that information and develop whatever the fuck you want. But we have people that go to college, get their degrees and their certifications, and they just regurgitate the party line. I mean, that's a type of evolution, but then that's also stagnancy if you can't evolve that information. And so, if you're already extremely intelligent and have an amazing foundation, why would you let your body die and deteriorate? If you do start over again, it's hell. Especially when you get a taste of major potential and intelligence and intellect. Remember the number line zero to infinity? That number line was for a reason. And so you have PEMDAS. What is that? Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. When you have all these different orders of operations, you know, five times two divided by six, with parentheses around this and all that algebra, that's showing you how things divide and multiply. That's showing you structural engineering based upon the 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 the, ap the atmosphere and, and the geological formations. All those different formulas are telling you what kind of laws apply to equations so you can have an outcome of something fucking strong or something weak relative to the environment. Okay, so zero to infinity says that's infinite potential and then you can modify things based upon your intention and your atmosphere and the geological location. All right, so math and, 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 and physics and chemistry and all the different types of math and, and English or language and all the subject matters, the basic subject matters in school give you that foundation. And it's up to you to evolve it and develop equations and develop things so that way you can make your existence less stressful so you don't have continuous breakage and deterioration so you end up back to be a single fucking cell amoeba. That you are still very intelligent and can take on evolution. And you're not teaching your kids and everyone around you to freaking die someday. Okay, that's what I'm offering is that you don't have to go back to that rudimentary platform. You are you already made it, everybody. You made it. You're fucking here. There's spirits out there that wish they'd known possess a body, and some do, but they're killers. That's what the system is trying to look for, all the different killers in our society. Sometimes they have to let them happen because you can't arrest someone for a potential. I mean, there's indicators out there. 
that then, you know, but we can't go arrest someone because what they say on Facebook that might lean to that situation. There's even kids that say shit. You're like, holy crap, that came out of that kid. What the hell is going on in his head? But you can't arrest that kid because maybe one day that will get purged out. Maybe it won't. You don't know until they actually act upon their instincts. You can't do shit, but you can notice indicators. That's why is, that's why I got to pay attention to what people say, <laughs> what kids say, what adults say. And that's question everything that you've ever, ever questioned everything. And so why would you go back to square one and accept that type of existence of going back to a rudimentary single celled ame amoeba when you already made it? You already made, you are a complex 69 trillion microbes that have multiplied and divided and done all these different equations, calculus, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trigonometry. There, you are so complex and so fucking evolutionary, but people actively destroy their evolution because of the system of wanting to enslave and develop minds for a very specific job. And there's a lot of redundancy in the population. There's so much, but they had to, that's insurance. So there can be evolution over here. And while that evolution is going on over here, we still have an infrastructure over here and there's going to be collateral damage. And I'm saying J world and people in my world, you don't have to be collateral damage in the process of evolution and transition. But it's going to take a change in lifestyle. Belief systems can change. It's going to take a change in facing your demons. And some people are not prepared to do that. And I'm sorry if you're not. I'm just trying to give opportunity to those that might have that kind of structure in their life. They have that, that kind of infrastructure that potential so some of you are going back to square one and you are embracing it and we thank you for your service so you're already like hey i'm too far gone i'm not able to change i can't my friends and family won't let me change and i have absolutely no ability to evolve it's about my religion my politics my science dogmas and everything and i okay thank you we thank you for what you have done for us but maybe this information is not for you if it's not for you and you're like what i'm saying don't follow me because i will offend you and so you see now from zero to infinity, from microbe to insect to amphibian reptile. And this is just something really rudimentary that I put as far as a list of evolution and exponential, you know, intellect and intelligence. Microbe, insect, amphibian, reptile, mammal, and then human. And so if you're already human, you're at the top of the fucking food chain. You're at the top of the food chain. So you've been told that the microbes are the top of the food chain. They can be if you let them get out of control. But you as a human are at the top of the food chain. Why would you go back to a microbe? Why would you go back to square one? Why would you start all over again? When you can evolve and release the demons, feel the pain, figure out that you were fed so much information that had a specific intention, and you were told to have families, told to get married, you're told to do this specific job and give your life for it, and no matter how much it... it, it destroyed you in the process you were told to do this and then everyone around you reinforced that reinforce that to keep you in line to keep you jailed that's why those in the j world <laughs> that literally understand this they will learn how to talk to their friends and family they will learn they have learned some of them already have it set up where they don't have too many people they have to answer to because fighting against your friends and your family and your associations and your positive religion, science dogmas and everyone around you is harder than fighting some invisible enemy out there that people think that they're fighting against. Democrat, Republican, communist, capitalist, some other religion over there. But the real fight is how you, how you develop change without somebody trying to stop you from changing. And who is that person? Usually it's your husband, your wife, your daughter, your son, your friends, your family, your religious you know, congregation. They're like, oh my God, you're going to die. So you're going to die if you do this. Oh my God, that's so dangerous. Oh my God. That's who you're up against. Is those that love you so much, they love you to death. That's the hardest of all, is to extricate yourself from that kind of jail and prison that's self-induced. And so if you can't handle change today, and you have to be under the influence and accept and or accept death as an outcome, it will be even more hell when you're forced into a lesser intelligent body coming back to earth, enslaved again under a human who has no idea how to maintain life 
and will attack your evolution with oncology and veterinary surgical butchery protocols. Okay? And so, yeah, when you come back as a dog under the, 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 the thumb of some human who just wants to use you as an entertainment piece, and then when your body tries to evolve and they're like, oh God, we can't let, you know, there's something happening here. And then they go and get, they take them to the vet or take them to some doctor that will then do stuff. And we see people filing charges sometimes against veterinarians who botched up an operation, who botched up something. Poor dog can't even get a break because there's so much people wanting that dog to go to get all these procedures done to it. And the dog does suffer and they're deteriorating and they're having to deal with the pain they, they can't even express because the human doesn't understand because they don't speak the fucking same language. Yeah, you can kind of see lang- you can kind of see body language and sometimes barks and all that, but still. Imagine if you were Muslim, imagine you're an ALS and you can't speak, but you have full like you you're aware, but you can't speak. As your body is deteriorating, you can't say anything. That's what's crazy. Is that's what goes on with with when we when we hold hand, animals under hostage? And I mean that includes also yes, even the meat industry. But what can you do? What can you do? I mean, we have to eat meat. We have to eat things, eat food that eventually is going to turn into a synthetic meat because we're not going to enslave animals anymore. Because let me tell you, I believe me, I don't love knowing that these animals are going through whatever they go through. But that's what's, but that's what's available at this point to survive. Remember, we're at the top of the food chain. And so, so then you come back and slave it again under a human who has absolutely no idea how to maintain life and will attack your evolution with oncology and veterinary surgical butchery protocols. And so when I was watching my dog go through her, 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 through her bullshit, when I saw those holes come back that was done to her through the spay, through the drilling of that growth before I had her. And then they used, they stitched her up, gave her antibiotics. And then that programming wore off and she was going through a major evolution, but she could have survived that evolution and not suffer so much if it wasn't for those operations that had to come back. And she had to suffer through them again, but this time without the anesthesia. And yeah, I'm sorry that we had, we had to see that but you had to see it. You had to see it because that's what you do to your friends and family when you tell them they have to go to operations. The body's under trauma and it's screaming. It doesn't want to be cut into. It doesn't want to be uh, you have have aggressive chemistry and elements forced onto it. But people do that. They purposely torture their bodies through operations and through aggressive elements, herbs, extracts, and even psychological conditioning that destroys the spirit or destroys a person's ability to evolve. And we have done that as humans to our kids, to our friends, our family. And that's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard thing to face. Some people cannot face it because it's, the pain is too great because of what they've, what they've done in their whole life and advocated. But your cells at the micro level did not want to have those kind of operations, did not want to have those types of elements forced onto it, did not want it, did not want it. But you, but you allowed somebody to commandeer your body, mind, and spirit, your immune system. And then when people get these different cancers, disease, and chronic illnesses later on, it's the body trying to come back. And then you attack it again. That's why there's an aging process. That's why there's the destruction. And so you all have an amazing foundation and you're fucking it up with your politics, your religion, and your science dogmas. And so when you finally do get recycled back to the universe at your own hand, will you get the luxury and the suffering to remember your prior life if you're in a less intelligent body? Is the universe that cruel? It can be. How many, again, how many animals look almost human and wish they could say things to their human, but they can't because they don't have the the mechanism to be able to speak English to the human and tell the human, what the fuck are you doing to me? Why would you leave me for eight hours a day? Why would you take me to the vet? Why would you force these medications down my throat? Why would you enslave me in this house, in this cage for hours and hours and hours and hours at a time? They don't have the ability to speak and defend themselves. So they're forced into servitude. 
that's exactly what happens to humans who don't have the, the voice, the, the, the understanding, the language, the verbiage to speak about what's going on right now. Like an ALS person who's very aware, their gut knows something's going on, their brain knows what's going on, but they can't fucking say it. They don't have the vocal cords. They're mute. They, they, they don't have, they have the vocal cords, but they don't have the muscles to be able to do that. They're muscle wasting. Is the universe that cruel? It can be. Some animals seem like they're human because they are highly intelligent and they are probably suffering on some level and they will have to die in order to transition to become human if that's even in their future. If they're allowed into that commune living. Okay, remember you're 69 trillion microbes and you have so many different representations of your whole environment. And so you as a human, you are already at the top of the food chain. If your excuse is you can't evolve or change because of your job, family, or friends, you are a slave at your own hand and your activism is bullshit. You chose this life. When you're exposed to this information, you chose the life of slavery, of not changing, of the destruction, and you have no one to blame but yourself. And so you are a slave at your own hand. Your activism is bullshit. You chose this life. That's why those in the J world who are serious, you can't feel sorry for people. Because if you are giving them an opportunity and you're showing their, you know, you're friends with me and they can kind of see what I'm doing and they're looking at, look at my stuff indirectly, right? They still have a choice. And so even when you comment on my page, even when you say whatever, or you, or you just have me as a friend, maybe indirectly you're giving your friends and family a choice. Because I'm going to fucking speak. I'm already hated out there, so I, I could give a shit if people hate me or not. I mean, I do and I don't. Somebody's got to make, somebody's got to speak. If you can't speak, somebody's got to speak. But you have give, but you have to give them a choice. You don't have to. But it is your duty as a human to give people choices. Yes, but is it your, but is it our duty as humans to give people choices? Yes. That's what humanity does. Okay, is we give people choices. We don't force politics, religion, or science dogmas down anyone's throat. We don't try to convert them, force conversion on them. That's what they did in all the different experiments. Is they did the whole electroshock therapy on people, done crazy ass experiments in all different sciences, and they force conversion on people, and that is horrible. Horrible. When you're telling someone to get a therapy or don't get a therapy, you're forcing conversion on them. And, and, and when you're and you're and you're trying to take away their pain, you're forcing conversion on them because you're selling them a perception around their pain of evolution of life. That's what goes. That's what I'm saying. Those when they realize, like the Vampire Diaries, when the vampires realize, when they get their humanity back, when they get their humanity back, they some of them don't survive being human because they can't believe what the fuck they did as a vampire, as someone who feeds off of other people through politics, through religion, and through science dogmas. When they get their humanity back, they can barely survive being human because then they have to face everything they've done to their friends and family in recommending aggressive, horrible, butcher-like procedures, uh, taking in aggressive elements against the body's life process. When they don't learn how to release the demons, when they're told to stop the body from releasing by taking those aggressive elements or developing demons because of all the different drugs that have been legalized or under a prescription, or then we're told, oh, you should take this tincture, this copper, this supplement, which is no different. All the supplements in the holistic industry is no different than what that's offered in the allopathic industry. Just a different way of packaging it. But some are even pharmaceutical grade. When you realize what you're doing to your friends and family in that capacity, can you handle being? Can you handle your humanity, or will you have to be a vampire still? That's what the Vampire Diaries was an allegory around people vampiring off their friends and family through politics, religion, and science dogmas. And when they realized that's what they were doing for years, stilting and stunting, some, well, stunting someone's evolution and aggressively throwing the word of God at them to break them down spiritually. When you finally get your humanity back, 
you may not survive your humanity because the shame and the pain will be too great. So there is something to all these stories that are on Netflix. Vampire Diaries, Suits, The Walking Dead. Those high budget budget series and Netflix and, and, and even stuff that's done on the terrestrial TV that transferred to Netflix. They're trying to tell you something without, without completely giving you the answer. Because again, every thought process is correct based upon the intention. And so when you think you're saving people, maybe you're saving other people from that person. So when you when you recommend them the pills, power supplements, the detoxes, and the, all the different metals, the copper, the zinc, and the supplements, and the detox, and, and all the, the, the legalized herbs, and the operations, and the surgeries, and all the spiritual warfare that's going on with people who, want, who believe people should die someday, maybe you're saving humanity from those people. So that's why you're giving them all the pills, powder supplements, and detoxes, and spiritual warfare and operations and surgeries and teach them not to release the demons you're saving humans so yeah you are saving humans from you're saving humans from your friends and family that you're recommending everything to in politics in religion and in science dogmas so yeah you are saving humans in a different way not what you think because remember everything is all based on what relative it's it's your special relativity depends on what perspective you're standing from and so while the system is saying, oh, yeah, you're saving your friends and family from, like, hell or whatever. No, you're saving humans on this earth from the hell of your friends and family. So you can look at everything in so many different ways. And let me tell you, people are like, oh, my God, what? Yeah, it's all in how you want to look at it. But you'll be sold one way and think that that's the only way. And that's politics, that's religion, that's science. And so I said, let your body die and your soul float around. You can get kidnapped and forced into a frog meat suit and forced into that existence. I'm sure there are very intelligent frogs that wish they weren't forced into that lifestyle. You as a human were given an amazing opportunity and it's very complex. And if you don't respect life in your body, you'll be, a force, you'll be forced to be very simplistic and come back as an animal or kidnapped and your soul forced into an insect body or an animal body and start over again or a worm underneath some construction site. Where you, where you hope that there are some Buddhists around there, they'll stop the construction to save all the worms and transfer them into another place. <laughs> so why not maintain the meat suit that you have and respect the life in your body and in your community? Don't attack life in your body and in your community, but respect it and release damage without attacking it. Everything has a soul, but you are lucky enough to be a human with a complex meat suit of adaptation. But you must understand natural law. When you die, it's because you violate the laws of life in your body and in your community. And so the V's are not poison because they're life. You're, you're supposed to be able to take the life that was exposed to you, right? Whether it's in your community through somebody's microbes or climate change or something that's given you in, directly injected. You're supposed to understand how to take that life and convert it to your benefit. But people don't. And that's why they have activism against certain aspects of the medical system. See, the reason why I don't do these because I can take life and be exposed to it and convert it to my benefit. And even if I do get some kind of immunological response that's aggressive, I know how to deal with it. And it's not and it's not dangerous for me because I feed it and I release the demons. I have a special technique that you can read in my book. And I don't have to die from it or develop any kind of diagnosable condition or age out or deteriorate or develop a, another religion of activism against it. But you see people do out there. They don't realize that there is a lot of climate change going on. And we have powers that be that understand how to manipulate the environment. And then also make people's religions be, be that much stronger. Oh gosh, the, come, the second coming of something. Or oh gosh, it's the summer solstice. And now we're seeing a huge energy shift. And the Schumann resonance is this, this, and that. And oh my God, we're going to go into some ascension. And everyone's going to go off and, and fly off to who knows where. And so you're seeing even the religions are getting radicalized by the climate change that man has figured out how to manipulate on some level. But can you see people that are believing in the whole human resonance and then think that's all like some kind of ascension type of thing? Can they can you see them acknowledge that there is harp and CERN and 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 
well, yeah, Wi-Fi, and we have all the particle acceleration and all the, the particle spreaders to make the environment very conductive, which is why you're feeling all these different feelings of headaches and all that stuff because your body's going through an energy conversion, a release, and then potentially build up if you understand food. But could you tell someone that? That that's what's going on, that there is a forced evolution going on, that you that you, you're either gonna figure you're gonna survive it or not. No, but you'll build a religion around it and absolute it away and then say, Oh yeah, and that's what the system wants you to do. They want you to not understand that that everything is manipulated in some way and that you have the ability to counter it and not only adapt to it, but thrive in it without destroying yourself. And you could be a great representation to your children. But most people will not because they've been radicalized in their new age religion as well as the old religions. And so, letting your body die and your soul float around, you can get kidnapped and forced into a frog meat suit and be forced into that existence. I'm sure there are very intelligent frogs that wish they were forced into that lifestyle. You as a human were given an amazing opportunity and it's very complex. And if you don't respect life in your body, you'll be forced to be very simplistic and come back as an animal or kidnapped and your soul forced into an insect body or an animal and start over again. Why not maintain the meat suit that you're in and have respect for life in your body and in your community? Don't attack life in your body and in your community, but respect it and release the damage without attacking. Everything has a soul, but you are lucky enough to be human with a complex meat suit of adaptation. But you must understand natural law when you die is because you violate the laws of life in your body and in your community. That's why I'm not getting a pet because humanity has not learned how to respect life yet. It's still just for entertainment purposes. Once you actually respect yourself, the earth will give you a companions indefinitely who won't die. and won't have to reproduce exponentially and life would not be commodified. Right now, life is traded on the open market and there's so much suffering along with that. And so that's why we're in a great reset. That's why you guys are feeling stuff. That's why you guys are now seeing everyone react in such a crazy way because the environment has has activated your politics, your religion, and your science dogmas. They've activated to such an extent that it's reinforcing your belief system because, again, you've been radicalized in your belief system, in your lifestyle. And then you're in the jail of your friends and family who won't let you change. Some have broken free. I've broken free from everyone. And, and I still respect the people that I know. But I also understand they have their own journey and their own battles they're going to have to deal with. And nobody can do it for them. I can't fight anyone else's battles. I can't force anyone to understand this information. I can't. I wish I could. I wish I could do it for everyone and, and save them. But again, if you don't understand what's going on, they will blame you for any feelings that they don't want to feel. So then you have to have your hands off. And if people don't want to change, they don't want to evolve, then you leave it for a doctor to have to, to let their malpractice insurance or anything else come into play when it needs to. Or have the system justify why it is this person did not survive all the different treatments. And so that's why the system has what it has. That's why you cannot recommend cures to people without a doctor's license. You can't. Because, yeah, eventually those cures are going to destroy somebody. And you do want to be held responsible for that. Okay. And so when people in hospice do Hail Marys, you don't want to even touch that. Oh, I learned my lessons the last seven years. But I'm trying to give you guys a way out. But again, you have to be stronger than everyone around you. And you've got to re realize that this, your politics, religion, science, dogmas, even the, they, that you were developed the last 10 years, can also be questioned and reexamined. It's not just the particle spreaders that are in the environment that's causing what your, whatever you know, reaction you have. It's not just the climate change that's causing a reaction. It's not just the different therapies out there that were told that you had to get for whatever reason. It's not just the, the GMO or the stuff in the water supply or all the, the... It's a combination of things and your lack of conditioning to deal with evolutionary changes, with the changes in the environment. Your lack of adaptability to even economical changes. And the way you react to evolution, you're always taking something to stop it. And that was conditioned in your genetic line and in you for fucking centuries. 
If you can't evolve today, there's no fucking way you'll be able to handle the increase in the heat because of climate change, regardless of where you think it comes from. So it's not going to matter if you blame the chemtrails. It's not going to matter if you blame the GMO or the Vs or the air, food, and water or Biden or Trump or whatever. It's not going to matter who you blame if you can't fucking handle evolution and adaptation. It's not going to matter. And then there are people out there that will promote all their tinctures and their pills and their powder supplements and herbal detoxes and all that stuff and think they're saving the world. And they are from those who can't handle evolution. And so when your friends and family are destroying the people that can't handle evolution, you can't be mad because they're saving you from them. And so you have to look at that could also be <laughs> that's also very relevant. You have to be able to stand on both sides of the equation. So all the saviors in our society are not really saving their friends and family when they're recommending them all the different protocols and all that stuff. You're actually saving those who have to deal with those who are taking all the protocols because they're breaking down and they're breaking down progressively. And when they're breaking down, their belief systems and everything else become even more violent or become more lovey-dovey or become so intolerant. And then the system's heating up the atmosphere, causing then the expert causing the acceleration in it because you watch people break down slowly and they're slowly going crazy and they're and they're out there just protesting and causing destruction how much of that can you take before the system has to go and regulate and increase the particles to then accelerate the deterioration process till it's finally silent you don't want to be in that position but people are in that position it fucking sucks i hate watching it it sucks but again, I can't save people. I can only speak out through this venue without attacking someone, without confronting them, without saying, I can't save people seriously, personally. I can only give them the information so they can figure out how to, how to transition away from that trajectory. But I wish I could save everyone. I really wish. I want to. Because you all ha hold a space in my heart. You all do. Everyone that's been on my Facebook, and it's even off my Facebook. That I was friends with at one point. Y'all hold a special place, and I just hope you all survive this. But again, I can't do it for you. I can't change the way you believe. I can't change the way you do shit. I can't change anything. I can only offer you more information for you to figure out how to transition, if that's even you know a desire. Okay. So. Yeah. And so that's really all I'm going to say. I mean, at this point. Uh, <laughs> So I hope that this trans this this transmission is good. I, this is my first Facebook Live using my new computer, but um, but I I I I am hoping for the best for all of you. And those that are in Africa, Nigeria, Senegal, uh, different places in Africa, you're seeing what we're dealing with, and you're seeing your country go through the same growing pains that we're going through. You're getting the intellectual um, exposure to all the different books. To, yes, the art of war. I mean, I'm watching, you know, influential Africans who are very intellectual recommend all these different literature to their audience. And so even people in Africa that are coming from a, a specific vantage point, just hungry for knowledge. And there will be a certain kind of split in that society. And there'll be sports for the for the warriors to channel their warrior, sp warrior spirit with the warrior within through the sports, through soccer, through all the different teams. And so well, that that's the that's the civilization, that's the civilizing of societies that were more in the law of the jungle. And now we'll have the rule of law to govern the conduct of nations. And so understand what that means. It means, yes, the Georgia Guidestones are the new Ten Commandments. The Georgia Guidestones are, is the new religion, the new world order religion. And you read them. It's in my book. I have them in my book. Because they're, I mean, you can think whatever you want of them. But that, that is the new religion. The new world order. It's not a bad thing. Just understand what's going on and survive it if you can. If you think it's all conspiracy and Jillian's fucked up and she's stupid, then why are you watching me? But there's something to it. There's a reason why the Georgia, Georgia guys existed and then they were demolished by who knows what. Everyone has their theories. But it lives on the internet. It lives in my book forever. Oh.
for as long as the system allows it. <laughs> all right, that's all I'm going to say. But um, I I'm excited for the world that we live in. I'm excited for everything. I'm just excited that I am able to figure this out. And my awarenesses have accelerated exponentially as the climate keeps accelerating. The connections, the new neural pathways are faster. But you got to feed your body. You can't starve and you can't try to take away the pain. And again, if you cannot deal with pain and you're under the influence all the time, okay, you're, you're suffering and I'm sorry. All right. Let's see if I can figure out how to stop this. <laughs> uh, okay. End live video. Whew. End. <laughs>